A lot has changed in 50 years. Man took his first step on the moon, the invention of the personal computer, the first and last flight of Concorde. The world has entirely changed as we know it. And in that time, 10 generations of Honda Civic have come and gone and evolved throughout the years. Now in its 11th generation, it's better built and even sharper to drive than before, if you can believe that. And now with a hybrid only powertrain, it should prove usefully frugal in a time where we're all placing greater focus on the rising cost of living. If you don't want an EV just yet, the new Honda Civic is a very strong contender in its class. Hi guys, I'm Tish and welcome back to my channel, Auto Social UK. Today, I've been very kindly invited down to Marshall Honda in Leicester to drive the all new 11th generation Honda Civic. Today, I'm gonna to find out if this is the best Civic ever made. I know, very bold claims. If you do like new car reviews and car content, also don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Okay, let's get into it. At 4.55 meters, it's the longest car in its class. And at 1.41 meters high, it's the lowest too. In a segment coming under increased pressure from crossovers and SUVs, the Civic looks like a very conventional old school hatchback. The engine has been lifted from the CRV. The two litre EHEV system has been tweaked and refined to make it more powerful, but also quieter and more efficient. Unlike hybrid systems from rival manufacturers, most of the time the engine acts as a generator to power the battery rather than the wheels, making it feel more electric more of the time. The engine can, however, send drive straight through to the front axle if it's under a heavy load or perhaps at higher speeds if you demand it to. The eCVT transmission isn't a gearbox in the conventional sense. But the aforementioned setup in the Honda Civic should mean that it's a much smoother powertrain and you don't have that sudden rise in revs that you find in a standard car with your average CVT gearbox. I don't know about you, but I love a magazine, especially an automotive magazine. Nothing feels more special than seeing new cars in glossy print. But every time I buy a magazine, I feel a little bit guilty. For starters, they're expensive. Some cost nearly five pounds for something like Top Gear, and then there's the waste. Well, I have a far better solution. This is the app Readly, which is a magazine subscription service. You pay a one monthly fee of nine pound 99, and then you have the access to thousands of magazines at your fingertips. Readly is now my go-to app for using when chilling or traveling. But here are just some of the highlights of Readly. There's no contract. You can cancel at any time. Unlimited reading. There's no limit to the amount of magazines or papers that you can read. Offline reading. So you can download them. Great for traveling when you don't have access to the internet. Latest and previous issues. You can see the mags when they land or search for an older issue, which is amazing for when I'm researching a car. And finally, family sharing. Once signed in, your friends and family can create their own accounts and keep their interests separate from yours. When one magazine is five pounds, nine pound 99 a month seems like a no brainer. But if you're not already convinced, then you can follow the link down below to get two months free. Cancel at any time to try it out. Thank you so much Readly for sponsoring the video. Okay. Let's get back into the review. Previous generations of Honda Civic have definitely divided opinions. They've been borderlining a little bit out there. Personally, I love the styling, but I can see how this new generation appeals to a far larger audience. It's now much more subtle, much more simple. You've got a honeycomb black front grille, which remember the honeycomb, because it's mirrored onto the interior as well, which I'll chat about later. You've got a set of slim headlamps. And on this sport model, I've also got an exterior pack, which is giving me some kind of chrome detailing on the outside. However, be careful. 
because this little accessory pack for the outside can cost over a thousand pounds, which though it looks nice, seems a little bit expensive. Because this is the sport model, I've also got a set of gloss black alloy wheels and some rear tinted windows. The previous generation of car may have looked outlandishly sporty from the exterior, but the engines were a little bit of a disappointment, including a one litre engine, which a lot of customers just didn't think was big enough for this size of car. Well, the new generation of Civic hasn't held back with its power. Nowadays, when cars are electrified, I feel like manufacturers don't feel the need to have particularly large engines. I guess it makes sense because a lot of them have that low down electric power, which gives you a lot of torque and you can pull off quickly. But most of the time they don't give you much beyond that. And then once you get up to a certain speed, it runs out of that power. Well, the Honda Civic haven't held back with their new generation of engine. It actually gets 181 brake horsepower and a 0 to 62 time of 7.9 seconds. That means at all speeds, the new Honda Civic feels pretty quick. Of course, when it comes to heavy electrification, that equals a heavier car. So it makes it a tougher job to still make the Honda Civic enjoyable to drive. But when it comes to handling, Honda have done such a good job to make this car still fun. It's actually now 22% more rigid. And that means as you go around corners, it doesn't flex as much. It feels really rigid and solid. And that means you feel like you can tackle those corners at a slightly higher speed. Grip levels are impressive as well. And that's because it gets Michelin Pilot Sport four tires as standard, and it has a wider rear track. Remember I mentioned about that honeycomb grille being bought onto the interior? Well, it's here across the air vents. But to me, it looks a little bit like chicken wire when it's finished in this chrome detailing. Everything feels really good quality. This center console is really nice and solid. You've got a nice mix of materials used. You've got physical climate control dials, which is really nice to see, and a decent amount of storage as well. You've got an armrest. You've also got nice cup holders here. You've got an okay sized glove box. It's a little bit disappointing from the outside. It looks massive, but on the inside, it's not that big. But as you can see, you can fit a decent amount inside of it. And the door cards are pretty good as well. Now here is a really nice feature that one of the sales executives from Marshalls told me about, and I'm so glad they did. So when you pull out this little removable part in the armrest on the back of it, I don't know how well you can see this, so I'll do a close up you've actually got a little sketch of the original Honda Civic and you've got the year, the date and the time that it rolled off of the production line. I absolutely love that. That's such a cute little feature. These seats are nice and comfortable. In the sport model, they are still manually adjusted, which isn't too much of an issue. I've also got reach and height in my steering wheel adjustment as well so it's really easy to get comfortable now in this sport model you have part leather part cloth seats but i feel like they just look a little bit dull for a sports model when anything has sport in the name you always think red stitching so i would like to see some red stitching around the seats and around the steering wheel but actually, all in all, everything is very unoffensive. It's all so easy to use. I love how logical Honda is. Everything has a button that you're able to press and it's all in a logical place where you think you'd find it. One thing, however, to me, which isn't logical, is this gear selector. So it's the same one out of the CRV. And I just find it a little bit complicated. In my brain, I want to pull down to drive. However, on this, you've got a button to drive and then you've got the little pull down if you want to go into a reverse. This is a very small complaint as I can feel that after a few days, you'd get completely used to it. But because I'm jumping in and out of other manufacturers' cars, it just feels a little bit backward. With the Civic now being the longest car in its class, that makes way for its trump card. Inside the new Honda Civic's boot, you'll find 404 litres of space, which is massive. 
In comparison, the Volkswagen Golf gets 380, the Ford Focus 375. Although it's not all positives. The load area is a little bit clumbersome due to there being quite a high load lip. But because the Civic is really low, it means that loading items in and out shouldn't be too much of an issue. You've also got a rear parcel shelf, which is attached to the boot lid. And then you've also got this second pull across parcel shelf, which tucks away nicely on the left, meaning all of your items will be concealed at all times, even if you don't go for a sport model, which gets a tinted rear screen. Being the longest and the lowest in its class gives the Civic some advantages and disadvantages, and you don't have to be that bright to work them out. I've got loads of legroom, it's really accommodating. But I'm 5'5 and with this headband on, my head is just about touching the ceiling, so it's not great for really tall people in the back. It's got a nice amount of amenities, including a pull-out armrest, but that doesn't feel the best quality. And I'm really surprised that there isn't any through loading, considering this car has such a practical boot. I've also got two USB charge ports, but they are the old style and not the new style USB-C. Because of the distinct lack of any engine actually doing any engining, unless you're at very high speeds, Honda have actually found a way to reenact the car changing gear. And they've also gone one step further in the Honda Civic. If you pop it in sport mode, you get the sound of an engine revving and changing gear as well. And I'm not quite used to this yet. It, it makes me laugh, but it does give you that feeling of a performance car, that noise. Wait, let me put my foot down and just show you. watching Top Gear in the background, what for? But it's kind of strange and you feel the car change up as well, but it's not actually doing that, which is just the strangest sensation. But it does give you that sporty feeling that you expect from a car which has 180 brake horsepower. The new Civic starts at 29,595. Stepping up to the sport trim increases the price to 3595 with top spec advance coming in at 32995 So the 11th generation Civic isn't exactly cheap, but much of that can be put down to the lack of entry level model. The Civic's base model is more like a mid spec for most manufacturers. Its sole powertrain is significantly more powerful than pretty much all of the range-topping performance models of its rivals, and that's if they offer a performance model. Put it against a more representative competitor, say for example the 150 brake horsepower Seat Leon FR, and the Civic isn't bad value for money at all. In terms of monthly payments, it's actually cheaper than a lot of these rivals. Plus, it's also more available. So I've been chatting to the guys at Marshall Honda in Leicester, and they say if you want an entry-level Civic, then you can have one by the end of the month. If you wanted this sport model, then you'll be waiting a couple of months. But overall, it's got much shorter lead times than most of its rivals. If you did want any more details on those lead times or anything about the Honda Civic, then follow the link down below to Marshall Honda. So to answer the question, do you think this is the best Civic ever? It's a difficult one for me to answer. There's no denying that the powertrain and how it drives is improved over previous models. But for me, it's just a little bit subtle. But let me know, what do you think? Pop it in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanted to see any more videos from me, then hit the subscribe button. And once more, thank you so much for Readly for sponsoring today's video. If you wanted that two month free subscription, then click the link down below. Until next time guys, see you later.